Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Good morning to some. Um, we're really, really excited. We have Qualcomm here today. They're going to be talking about uh, how to boost your resume application advice to secure an internship opportunity. We're extremely excited to have them speaking with us today. Um, before we hop into um, introducing, introducing the actual speakers, just want to go over a few quick things. We want students to definitely be excited and chat within the chat, but we're going to make sure that we keep the topic relevant to um, uh, the, the topic relevant to what's at hand. Okay. Um, from there, we want to make sure that at the end of this particular session that you all fill out the survey that we have and we'll be dropping. Um, all, all feedback for us is great feedback, so we definitely want you all to remember to do that. Um, and just a reminder that you all will be able to um, uh, chat with some of these companies and their company booths and things like that later on. Okay, so let's hop right, in, right into it. The first speaker I want to introduce is going to be Brian. Brian is the Global University Relations Partner with Qualcomm Campus Recruiting Team. Brian is our early, uh, early talent acquisition, community engagement, and student development professional with experience across corporate tech, secondary, and nonprofit sectors, holding a passionate a passion toward creating me meaningful and transformational opportunities for engaging or engineering leaders of tomorrow. Okay. Andrew is a senior talent acquisition specialist on Qualcomm's uh, campus recruiting team based in Minnesota with six years of recruitment experience. He is passionate about helping early career professionals find impactful roles where they can thrive. So everybody, let's welcome these amazing gentlemen to the stage. <clears throat> Thank you, Anthony. Let me share uh, our presentation for today. Uh, and while I do that, I want to encourage everyone. I put some instructions in the chat box over here. Looks like a lot of people are doing it, uh, but uh, it's not the me and the Andrew show today. Uh, we want to hear from everyone over here. So drop in your name, your school, your program, your year, and why have you attended today? Uh, if you've attended to learn uh, different resume and application tips, great. If you wanted to learn about Qualcomm, great. Or if you just wanted to be in the presence of two really cool people and me and Andrew, that's really cool uh, too. So uh, we'll, uh, I, I see them coming in and uh, we'll, we'll acknowledge it as they come in. One thing I wanna emphasize during this presentation is you're gonna see this QR code throughout each and each of the, uh, the slides over here. Why this is important is pull out your phone for a couple seconds, fill out this form. Why this is important is because when we're uh, evaluating our future job uh, applicants, it ties your attendance at this event and the code path event to your future applications going forward uh, we've already had 300 plus folks from the code path community indicate that so let's say whenever andrew goes online and looks at uh his jobs and applications he's able to see that uh just pulling out some names oh cool april wang from our session over here uh was uh one of the applicants to one of my roles and was also at the code path session uh, so really cool opportunity. If you're not going to get it right now, you're, it's going to be on every single slide. So don't feel rushed right now. We have the next hour and the main focus of this session is for everyone in this group walking away, feeling comfortable, not only knowing about Qualcomm, but also feeling that, that they're in a really good position to submit a strong resume application. Uh, and they kind of did the intro for us, but my name is Brian Mulatto, I'm the Global University Relations Partner. Uh, I'm going to throw Andrew on the spot. My favorite NBA team is the Toronto Raptors because I'm from Toronto. Andrew, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot. What is your favorite uh, NBA team? Golden State Warriors. We've got them in the background. Oh, there you go. We are on the opposite ends <laughs> when it comes <laughs> to that. And uh, sorry for 2019, Andrew. Happens. <laughs> we have our fair share. Perfect. So here's what it's looking like. Of course, of course, of course, a lot of people, I'm seeing it in the section over here, you want to learn about resume tips and tricks, but it wouldn't be a Qualcomm session if we didn't give you a little bit of an introduction of what Qualcomm is, our internship opportunities and in universities. And I think it's important to do that because when you get the context of the different positions over here, you can contextualize and make the edits in your resumes to bring it up to a really good level. And that's a little bit of what the session looks like. We have allotted 10 minutes uh, to Q&A at the end, but hey, time is fluid. If we move a little faster, we move a little quicker, we'll see. But you have us for up to one hour and we'll get it started.
<laughs> Raleo says sorry for 2019. Thank you, thank you. We are a very casual bunch over here, so throw those questions over here. We'll try our best to go back and forward. We want to leave. Uh, we want you leaving, just making sure you had a great time and all your questions and concerns were answered over here. That being said, I'm going to relinquish uh, uh, a screen and I'm going to share it for a video that we want to share. Prior to the video, I have some notes. I have a really cool video I want to share with you. How many of you have seen the amazing, amazing movie Everywhere, uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once? Give it a thumbs up in the comments. Uh, spoiler alert, this video features a special person uh, talking about the edge of possibilities with Qualcomm. So if you all enjoyed that video, I think you'll enjoy this video and it gives a good snapshot to Qualcomm. So that being said, I'm gonna pass to uh, our, uh, I'm gonna pass it to Jake. Feel free to take over the screen. Jake, you might be presenting it in the backstage, or can anyone give me confirmation that they can see it in the main room? Not being played yet, but will be played very soon. Thanks for confirmation now. Here we go, here we go. The workplace has changed, and so have the tools we need to be successful. That's why Qualcomm is pushing the limits of technologies like artificial intelligence to help us stay more intelligently connected at home and in the office. Innovations like AI-based face filters and background blur are there to help us look our best when and where we need it. And with auto framing, the laptop camera is able to track your movement to create movie-like framing effects. But there's more to these innovative solutions than meets the eye. With Qualcomm AI-powered noise cancellation, the microphone can recognize and isolate your voice, removing unwanted distractions. Can you guys hear me okay? All right, great. Do you think there are some slides that we need? Keeping you the center of attention. Welcome to the edge of possible. Great, thank you for sharing that, Jake. I'll reshare my screen and we'll get started uh, into today's session. Also, Andrew, hold me accountable. I often ramble, so uh, tell me to speed it up if uh, if I'm doing a horrible job on that. I just like You're hanging good. with the students over here. You're good. So I have a little bur blurb about Qualcomm, but I'm gonna go a little off script just to get everyone involved. Uh, for those who know about Qualcomm, give me one, two, three words in the comment section like what are the first keywords things that come to mind when you think about qualcomm snapdragon if that was if this was a family feud snapdragon might be in the top one or two uh when it comes to that we got semiconductors i think that's in it's one two and three maybe hardware tech first digital phone trivia Great wow knowledge. people know G good work jonathan good work we have some Qualcomm experts over here, Andrew. Yeah, we really do. I wasn't expecting to see the first uh, the first phone. <laughs> yeah, I've never I've done this presentation many times. I've never seen that as one of the responses. Yeah. Cool. Intel acquisition. <laughs> That's been a lot of people it. are Intel <laughs> acquisition. Uh, no comment. Uh, yep. That being said, um, I'm gonna jump into a little bit of the presentation. So. Uh, Qualcomm's vision is a world where everyone and everything can be intelligently connected. You can see all of the industries were pictured in here. Uh, devices and objects uh, will be inseparable from the content, data, have the ability, and have the ability to share information in near real time, driving greater autonomy and efficiencies. Qualcomm's aim is to accelerate innovation that will transform and disrupt virtually every industry, creating jobs for mil uh, trading millions of jobs, driving economic growth, and enriching lives around the world. Uh, as we Adam just touched on, Andrew. yeah, as we just touched on, um, we're we're really um, you know a chipset company um, leading in a bunch of different areas, and we'll get into it in a little bit. Um, but we're really leading the charge for five G around the world. Uh, for thirty five years, we've been at the forefront of mobile innovation, uh, realizing the full potential of intelligently connected future. Um, Qualcomm's driven the the development and commercialization of five G. 
Um, and 5G was engineered to provide fiber-like speeds, ultra-low latency, and massive capacity to support billions of intelligently connected devices. Um, Qualcomm continues to drive the evolution of the 5G roadmap to enable new features, greater performance, and to further expand uh, the reach of this technology. Um, next slide, please. So this is just a quick snapshot of our uh, one technology roadmap. Um, this is really a roadmap of where we're going. Um, so we've developed this roadmap to more efficiently pursue new markets and growth opportunities. Um, and this is our leading portfolio of mobile innovations that can scale to support virtually every connected device. So if you look across, uh, we're in you know handset, so mobile, automotive, consumer IoT, edge networking, and in industrial IoT. So kind of everything everywhere is uh, you know kind of what this one technology roadmap encompasses. Everything, everywhere, all the time, Andrew. That's it. <laughs> that should be our tagline. Um, and then here's just a quick snapshot of our current employee landscape. So we have over 50,000 employees worldwide um, in over 30 different countries, uh, 117 nationalities represented, 92 languages spoken um, in over 170 offices um, in San Diego, as I'm sure you are all familiar is our headquarters um, and our largest location out of all of them. Perfect. So that was a quick little snapshot of what Qualcomm is. Uh, could have probably went quicker because it sounds like we've got a, a Qualcomm experts over in the chat over here, but a little bit about our internship program. The reality of why I put a slide like this over here is it could be a little biased if me and Andrew tell you that Qualcomm is a, a great place to work. Yeah, even though objectively we think it is, uh, we're on the payroll. So uh, we like to put something over here that tells you that not only are, do we really invest in our student programs over here, but we have other notable organizations giving us the reputation that we're doing a great job, whether it's in alignment with the great work that CodePath is doing, Forbes nominating or awarding us as 2023's America's Best Employees for Diversity, uh, and overall uh, world's uh, best employers in that list as well. And I also want to emphasize specific to our student-based programs over here, there's this program called Ripple Match uh, that uh, evaluates different, uh, different student-based hiring programs amongst all the companies, and Qualcomm was awarded the 2020 one of the 2024 campus forward awards over here again why i say all this in the slide deck over here is we can tell you it's a great place but crawlcom is getting recognized uh, globally and internationally as a great place specifically even our student programs over here and a little bit of emphasis uh, oh, let me change the slide uh, a little bit of emphasis on our uh, dedication to diversity equity and inclusion it's demonstrated really strongly over here and we're really sincere. So we are aligned with the mission and values of CodePath over here. So much so that two organizations such as the 3BL uh, in 2023, the best corporate citizens to Newsweek's 2024 greatest uh, workplaces for diversity. Quite frankly, uh, we recognize it it takes a lot of uh, intentionality and effort to work with those from, uh, to encourage those from diverse backgrounds and to uh, build a strong community where they could feel welcome and supported over here at Qualcomm. And how do we do that? We focus on these three key areas, uh, not only connecting with these communities in terms of hiring them, but what are we doing to build infrastructure to help develop them and retain them in our communities as well. Uh, and Qualcomm does an impeccable job when it comes to employee retention. I remember all data we had was the average tenure of an employee that worked at Qualcomm was around like seven years. So I think that's pretty good when it comes to industry market standards. Can I? The next, oh yeah, go for it. Sorry, can I, can I add something there? Um, yeah, for sure. For our for our intern program, for our new hire program after our intern. So I mean, the main reason why we have our intern program is to hire early career talent from a full time perspective. Um, when we say hire, you know, you get your foot in the door, you kind of prove, you know, um, how you're able to kind of navigate certain technologies, uh, perform, etc. The development piece is really key here. Um, we give you a manager a mentor um, and actual real applications, business applications that you'll be working on over the summer uh, from an internship perspective. And even as a full-time employee, uh, you know, assuming, you know, we bring you on full-time, we still give you, you know, that manager and that mentor. And that mentor piece is really important to kind of point out, right? Your mentor is there to kind of help you, you know, grow, especially early on, kind of challenge you in ways that uh, you might not have expected or, you know, kind of stretch your skill set. Um, beyond maybe what's a little bit more comfortable, right? 
Um, and it's really kind of that development piece um, that I personally love about our program um, and the mentorship that we provide, you know, beyond just giving you a manager and saying, here's your project, go work on it. Um, they meet with you on a weekly basis. Um, so your manager and mentor both meet with you um, on a weekly basis in separate meetings. Um, and then you also obviously have, um, you know, a team that you're going to be working as a part of. So I uh, thought I would add that. Sorry, Brian. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, a lot of great infrastructure over here, just like Andrew said about like the, the things we want to do to support you. Uh, being cautious at the time, we only got three more slides until the resume portion. So uh, uh, just a little bit about Qualcomm. This is the last slide until I pass it back to Andrew. Uh, but like like the people saw over here in the chat, we are a global operation and our team is global as well. Uh, you can see my beautiful face over there located in Toronto and Andrew not too far from me. But we are headquarters over in San Diego and that's where you see the bulk of folks over there too. Not only only that, while today's presentation is focused on our America's uh, internship programs, we have presence over in EMEA, India, APAC, uh, and um, yeah, we are the definition of uh, global. We have a very ro robust internship program, and Andrew is going to talk about it right now. All righty. Uh, so here's a quick overview of our internship program. So, you know, it's over the summer only, um, so it's typically, you know, mid-May-ish till the end of September. And it's really kind of spanning different, uh, you know, start dates, 12 to 14 weeks. Um, so again, kind of that May through September timeframe. Um, here's our kind of, you know, internship opportunities listed out as um, the, you know, requisition IDs or requisition numbers, um, however you want to, you want to frame that. Um, the majority of our internships are going to be located in San Diego. Um, there's other locations that are, you know, we call them remote opportunities. We have, uh, you know, offices in Austin, Raleigh, Santa Clara, Boulder, and Boxborough, um, and among others. Um, the kind of qualifications is you can't be a graduated senior. Um, so you have to, so for this summer, uh, for instance, uh, you would have to have a grad date after uh, one month after our internship end date. So, you know, September of 2020 five, we would be looking at, um, you would need to have a grad date of October of 2025 or later. Generally, we see December. Uh, but for those PhDs or those master's candidates that have an off cycle, um, you know, grad date, um, October of 2025 would be kind of our first um, eligible grad date uh, for people to, to qualify. Next slide, Andrew. Yes, sir. So if you were asked kind of a general question of what do, what do we hire for, um, it would really kind of take a whole session um, as we hire for a, a variety of roles. So here's kind of a, a simple breakdown of one slide of what you know we're looking for in terms of you know different internships. Um, so I'll give you a second to kind of look through that. Maybe while they analyze it, Andrew, what type of roles do you hire for? I personally hire for um, systems, hardware, uh, mechanical, um, some software roles. So kind of a, a variety of different roles. Um, I'm not on the IT side um, and I kind of cross over into AI ML from time to time, uh, but it's really kind of more of a AI ML applications side. Cool. Hey, throw it in the chat box. What type of opportunities uh, you're looking for in uh, in the room over here? Uh, and I'm seeing a lot of questions about full time. A lot of these are directly uh, tied into our full time business hiring groups and whatnot. So likewise, if you're seeing stuff over here, I would recommend you check qualcomm.com slash campus. You can see a great amount of opportunities, not only internship programs, but full time opportunities as well. Uh, and I'll give it to Andrew to bring it home for this session. All righty. So this is what Brian was kind of mentioning when we kicked off at first. Um, make sure to to click on the UR code um, and you know make sure to go through and apply. Um, and so we have you in our system. Um, not only you know your resume, your information, but also where you came from is important, right? When we're looking at our partnerships um, like CodePath uh, and other you know diversity partners, um, we really value where they come from. Um, so please take time to. Um, go through and scan the UR code. 
Um, so this is going to list off all Qualcomm opportunities for internship, new grad positions, and experienced openings. Um, we hire primarily, again, for engineering across the key technical areas like embedded software, hardware, firmware, systems. Uh, we hire all the way from bachelor's through PhD um, in computer engineering, computer science, electrical engineering fields. Um, key technologies that our, our engineers work in require fundamental understanding of C, C++, Python, uh, Java. And in order to excel uh, in your application with Qualcomm, uh, we really recommend the following. Um, ensure your resume is up to date. That's kind of first and foremost uh, with your programming language and, uh, and proficiency. So keywords such as you know, C, C++, Python, et cetera. Um, read the job description for any special technologies that you might um, uh, that, that are called out um, specifically. Um, highlight your experience in those, um, you know, whether it's bold, in color, uh, on your resume. Attend fall recruit, uh, recruiting opportunities at your university. Um, check with your university for you know, certain events that we might be at. Um, attend, uh, attend those as, as much as you can. Um, look for our, our postings each month. Um, we have, you know, postings coming up quite often. So if you're, uh, you know, a, a new grad or you're looking for a full-time opportunity, I would, I would encourage you to check the website often. Um, and then the best way to stand out is really to make connections within the company and really show your interest. Um, so if you see a, a specific team that you're interested in joining, maybe find, you know, an engineer from that uh, from that, you know, line of business or, or from that area of, of the engineering team uh, and just introduce yourself, um, you know, say, hey, you know, I'd, I'd love to talk to you about your day to day, um, understand what you do um, and, you know, kind of network in that way. And, and maybe that would help help um, help set yourself up for success there. Um, all right. <clears throat> cool. So we, we got through that little bit of a sales pitch intro of what Qualcomm is. Now we're in like the, the meat and potatoes of this presentation. So we have some very high level questions. Uh, we, we like it to be very interactive. So throw it in the chat. Uh, just tell us high level, what are resumes known for? What do you know about them? And I love this third question because sometimes I hear good things and sometimes I hear horrible practices that I've read on like Reddit and whatnot. So what are the best practices hacks that you've heard around resume? Uh, so no judgment. Tell me some weird, cool, common things that you've heard uh, just to get that ball rolling over here. One page, uh, blank white paper. Keep it short and to the point. ATS, uh, for those who don't know, applicant tracking system over there. Uh, they only look at them for five seconds. Oh, this resume is popping off that I can't even keep <laughs> up with them. Quantify, <laughs> XYZ. Action verbs. Education quality, first. Quality over quantity. I don't know who the, uh, I think someone said Jake's resume template. Don't know who Jake is, but we'll get into that. <laughs> well, you'll have Qualcomm's resume template going forward. That's that. Advertising keywords. to customize. Big one, one. keywords to job, uh, customize the job description. Very big. <laughs> Great, a lot of ideas over here. We can go on for days, uh, but we, yep. our next couple of slides are gonna be talking about uh, pretty much those tips and tricks. And I wanna pre-emphasize that by saying, these are things that me and Andrew stand by. You might go to another company that might have completely different practices, but me and Andrew have been in the game for quite a long time. So we also stand by our practices too. Uh, that being said, I'm gonna to go to the next slide. Just throw a random number, whether it's seconds, whether it's minutes, how long do you think the average uh, Qualcomm recruiter spends looking at one resume. I saw I saw five seconds. seconds earlier. There's seven. There's twenty. We'll cue the Jeopardy music. Do, 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 do. <laughs> five, seven, fifteen, thirty, one hour. Dang, that's a long time. I feel like the aggregate time is like as low as six to thirty, with some outliers outside of there. One second because of AI. Love that. Someone put negative seven seconds. Negative, I negative don't seven. know how you can do that. I, mean, <laughs> I wish there was a negative the seven. That'd be awesome. <laughs> perfect. So we have some good guesses, and I think we're in the perfect uh, uh, universe of the answers over here. Oh, wow, Andrew, I stole your slides. I'm so sorry about that. No, you're good. <laughs> I'll, I'll give it back to you. Um, all right. Well, next Oops. slide and, and should reveal the answer. So 15 seconds. Um, and 
I know that a lot of, uh, there's a lot of, I guess, um, I guess, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to search for the word. Anyways, we do actually look through all resumes, um, contrary to popular belief. Um, we don't use AI to, you know, do like a word scan or something like that. What we do is we go through what the job is calling for. So if it's C, C++, Python, I will put those words into, you know, a Boolean search, right? Um, and those resumes who have those keywords will pop up. I go through each and every one of those resumes in a stack, right? What I am looking for when I am looking through the individual uh, resumes is those keywords, those skills, and making sure that they match what the what the hiring manager is looking for, um, any relevant job experience, et cetera. So um, again, um, we go through every single one of those resumes that meet that job criteria, but that is kind of what we look for. And that's about the time is about 15 seconds. All right. So kind of an introduction to, you know, resumes, right? So this is our take on resumes, um, can differ by company, industry, recruiter, et cetera. Um, but this is at least what we do. Um, what we're looking for is kind of a summary of your experience, right? What skills you have, what you've worked and studied, uh, what you've accomplished, how you've added value, et cetera. Um, be specific is kind of the, the best advice that I can come up with is be specific with what you've accomplished. So why the work you've done is important. Um, what metrics um, were you able to kind of drive or what efficiencies were you able to drive because of, you know, you implementing this or you, you know, putting together a solution for that or et cetera, um, and what you've been able to drive through your work. So if you've worked on a project, what was that project about? Um, if you worked as a part of an, uh, a company as an intern, what did you do for them? Um, you know, was there anything that you've, uh, you were able to achieve while there, um, et cetera, and so on. And as, uh, as, as much as you're able to drive impact, um, that's kind of telling a better story. And to the many chats, uh, you know, chat windows that I've seen here, um, be, you know, specific bullet points and drive, you know, value as much as you can um, and be, you know, as brief as you can while telling that story. Next slide, please. Um, so general guidelines, um, you know, again, kind of should scream value add ability and not like a, I did this, I did that, I did this. Um, that just kind of tells me like, you know, what you did, but showing the value add is kind of more impactful um, is, is the best way to put it. So curate your resume to the job posting also. Um, that's kind of very important. So um, keeping a general resume uh, in your files with all of your experiences, all of the things that you did at that company um, or, you know, project, et cetera, uh, will, will be helpful when you're, you know, trying to kind of come up with your, uh, you know, impact statement, um, whether it's at the project or company. General rule of thumb, you know, as a bachelor's candidate, I, I expect kind of a one pager, um, you know, graduate level or higher. I mean, even master's level candidates, um, typically one pager. PhD, if they have a very long history of just, you know, cranking out papers, publications, uh, research experience, internships experience, et cetera, I can see a two pager um, and that that happens. But, um, and yeah, again, some people might have many publications, which kind of justifies the second page. Um, ensure it's simple to read um, and, you know, kind of also proofread your resume. Um, make sure that there's no spelling mistakes, grammatical errors, uh, poor communicated uh, formatting are kind of a red flag, right? Um, just running it through a simple spell check, for instance, um, might not be enough. It's just kind of have, you know, you read through it and then also have someone else kind of proofread it and make sure that, you know, they don't find any errors too. So having a separate set of eyes is, is helpful sometimes. Um, okay, next slide. Um, so make sure your resume is, is really kind of easy to find is, um, is the best way to put this. Um, it's, it's critical because we receive a high volume of resumes, um, to the tune of, I think we had over 60,000 applicants this past recruitment season. Um, so just make sure that yours is, um, you know, easy to find, you have keywords in there, um, 
if you if you have a special security clearance, um, call that out. Um, as we have a need for you know higher security clearances uh, for some of our roles, and it's generally really expensive to get that security clearance for backgrounds. So those in cybersecurity or IT, um, you know, very important. Um, I would have everyone really not include photos of themselves or their address as to you know um, you know limit potential discrimination, right? Um, so those are kind of the the don'ts. Um, a simple name, email, LinkedIn, URL, GitHub, other professional uh, identifiers are really the best way um, that we would recommend to present yourself on a resume. Um, yeah, I think that that's pretty much all the call outs here that I would um, I would recommend. Um, and so tips on a resume high impact practices um objective statements um you've already applied to that to that internship um i already know that you're interested in that um i think that the skills section um, as we've already touched on are more important um so when i'm looking at a resume i already you know again know what you're applying for so the um the skills is kind of the the most important piece um i'm looking at resumes which meet the requirements for the job that i'm recruiting for um, don't really look at many other things. I look at your experience, uh, the things that you did while at, you know, your, uh, your internship or your projects or, you know, kind of the body of work in your skill section. Um, so just something to call out there. Um, typically I, I don't really look at the, um, you know, good communicator, good, um, you know, team player, et cetera. Um, I can, you know, we kind of flush that out during the interview process when you're speaking with people. Um, so really what is important to me is, do you fit the job criteria? And I'm sending your information on to the hiring manager. All right, next slide, please. Um, so one of the more important things to call out that I see actually quite often um, is grad date um among the others on the on the left side um uh, in the must include section is one of the more important ones uh for interns we're looking for someone who will not be graduating um during or before the internship period so for this summer of 2025 i think i covered this earlier um october of 2025 would be the earliest grad date that that we would have for someone to qualify for our internships generally december of 2025 or even may 2026 is you know generally the um the timing that we're looking at here um there are some people that have you know you know their bachelor's degree it says you know 2021 to present with no like anticipated end date what we want to see that is um what we want to see is like your anticipated end date so like may june 2025 or may june 2026 whatever that anticipated grad date is that's very important because that can either qualify or disqualify you from the e, being intern eligible, uh, just based on our guidelines from a legal perspective. So um, say you are a perfect fit for the role. We just want to, you know, make sure that you, um, you know, qualify from a graduate standpoint or a graduation standpoint. Um, you should, um, you should include, you know, coursework, uh, that apply to that job. So again, kind of tailoring that that resume to the job in which you're applying for. Um, you know, majors, double majors, degrees, um, GPA. We don't have a, a hard and fast requirement, um, so there's no you know like 4.0s or higher. You know, less important than a 3.0. Um, again, if you have coding skills that uh, fit our job requirements, um, you know, I'm I'm sharing those with the hiring managers. All righty. I feel like I've been talking for 15 straight minutes. Uh, Brian, back to you. No worries. You'll take chat uh, duty and I'll jump over uh, over right here. So chat is booming over here. It looks like Qualcomm's a popular place to be. Cool. So resume high level tips. Uh, a lot of this was covered in Andrew's uh, discussion points over there. So I don't want to go into too much details. Uh, but if I had to break it down into eight different major, major consumable points is use those keywords, keywords from the job description, especially when, um, I mean, check the job description and use the same keywords in the resume. Notice that I'm emphasizing same, I'm not using similar. Uh, focus on the keywords and skills 
mentioned multiple times and with emphasis. For example, Qualcomm, you might see some stuff as C++, Java, Python, MATLAB, or VHDL, or VL, uh, VLSI. These are critical uh, for uh, the wide variety of roles that we have over here, and there might even be more as well. And I'm not going to leave that point without re-emphasizing, use the same exact word. The reality is when we're uh, when Andrew is using Boolean searches, uh, we if we're looking for C++, we are directly looking for C++. We're not looking for C, we're not looking for languages as equivalent to X or Y, you know? Look, put in those keywords in there so we're able to catch it on the first glance. Uh, the second one over here is, of course, tailor your resume. Customize each of these resumes to that job description. Don't need to go for, for over there. One thing I was putting in the chat box over here is I'm really big on, and I know a lot of resume, um, a lot of recruiters are as well, showcase your experience with quantifiable uh, results. Please, please do not treat your um your limited amount of bullet points under your uh, previous experiences as uh, as a laundry list of things that you did. You know, of course, we want to see one or two lines of what were your responsibilities, but we really want to see what were the impacts, what were the learnings, what were the processes you take out of that. So include internship projects and relevant uh, work experiences. Use bullet points to describe those achievements with numbers, like you put some like developed a mobile app that increased user engagement by 20%, or developed a circuit that reduced power consumption by 15%. I put an example of that over, or I think I replied to. Some Someone in the chat box over here when it came to that too. Uh, and education, Andrew highlighted that. But emphasize those different things like relevant uh, degrees, majors, minors, and graduation dates. Um, my, my rule of thumb is if it's a competitive GPA, please include it. Uh, you interpret that how you want. Uh, if not, then uh, that could be a hindrance to your actual application. So we don't blame you if you omit that from your resume. So mention those relevant courses. Because I think I saw a question over here, like, um, should I be putting courses over here that I'm taking? If they're relevant to the roles that you're applying for, because you will have that experience, you can put something like in progress or the previous experience that you've put it as well. Cool. We've got about 20 more minutes over here, and we're, we're making good on time, too. Cool. So here's the other four uh, consumable versions of that, too. So... Action words, action words, action words. Uh, start each bullet point with strong action word, whether it's developed, designed, implemented, and analyzed to your resume to make it more dynamic. One thing I want to emphasize over here, my biggest pet peeve is when one person is very, very repetitive with these uh, action verbs. So use action verbs, but use different action verbs. Uh, please empathize to the experience that someone like Andrew might have as a technical recruiter where if you have to read the word develop 20 times in a row, there's that psychology of reading this resume wasn't an enjoyable experience because it read very repetitively. Uh, of course, you could have stellar experiences, but you have to make your resume a consumable venue to uh, demonstrate your experiences. And a lot of people wrote this too in the chat over here. Keep it simple. Use a clean professional format too. You don't need to throw pictures. You don't need to throw different multi-layered uh, column text boxes over here. Make sure it's ATS friendly because while some ATSs are great, some might be able to might not be able to parse it as well as other ones. And we want to make sure that your information is getting demonstrated accurately. So keep it ATS friendly too. Uh, include those relevant sections. Andrew talked about that. And proofread, proofread, proofread. A big turnoff for me is when uh, I could see not only when there's misspellings, but also the wrong companies, quite frankly. Uh, I've gotten cover letters and I've gotten resumes that say I'm... Um, this is a fun story where someone gave me a resume and in their objective statement it says uh, i'm looking for a part-time opportunity at burger king nothing wrong at burger king but i think there was opportunity over there too i think that was meant for uh, the application could have been curated better for us too so please it's a once over make sure it's aligned to the company and the opportunities you're going for and please do that cool next slide over here a big, big theme that I get from a lot of students, uh, which I understand, I empathize, it's quite a hard market right now. Uh, when students say, how can I get an internship or how can I get a work experience if I've never had work experience too? 
I'll empathize with you in saying, yes, it is helpful if you've had different relevant work experiences, because that does help your application, but that is not the only method for you to get relevant experiences. We are hiring interns with the understanding that you are not having three, four, five, six, seven years of experience uh, down the pipe. So how can you get experience that is accessible to you? Of course, there is previous internships and co-ops. Of course, there is different job opportunities. But let's say if you're able to explore different volunteer opportunities, research opportunities, a lot of folks over uh, a lot of our previous uh, ones that I've seen as a lot of our previous interns have applied to Qualcomm weren't successful. They reached out to their hiring managers and saw if there was like TA ship research assistant opportunities and all relevant opportunities within their classrooms to get more experience with that. They come back with a better application and boom, they were able to be successful at Qualcomm. Please note that you can get this experiences with projects, uh, getting involved in hackathons. I know some people in the chat were chatting about like a local hackathon that they were talking about. Technical competitions, conference presentations, GitHubs, leadership roles, TA says, I said that, and tutoring and facilitating experience over here. And uh, partnerships with, I'll even note notably, like your association and participation with organizations like CodePath and uh, different student groups over here. Those are things that I'm particularly keen of, and I know other recruiters look at those with similar weights as, uh, as similar to like internship co-ops and jobs. So that's a little bit of how you can get that additional experience. Maybe I'll just uh, go side over here. Andrew, is there things outside of like previous work experience that really jump out at you that you're like, oh, that's really interesting or that's relevant? I think certifications, um, proficiency or projects in which, um, you know, showcase your expertise in particular languages, technologies, et cetera. Um, I mean, all of these are what Brian highlighted, but um, yeah, I would say that those things are important. Perfect. And one thing I will tell you by filling out this QR code, y'all, uh, we are actively seeking um, many folks for the upcoming year, uh, especially with their association with Qualcomm, uh, with CodePath too. So that's just another pitch to fill out that QR code. Cool. Uh, next slide over here. Cool. So here's just two examples of whether uh look at the top two examples so the first example would be uh responsibilities included assisting with artist press release compiling tracking sheets based on information for reservation and box office attendees handling uh photo and uh press release uh mailing assisting in radio copying and performing a variety uh, of various other duties as well so it does a good job of listing what they've done. But one thing over here is that we're really not hitting the impact areas of this. So these are two examples of where you can show improvements and quantified improvements of how you can write this better on a resume. And arguably, you could even bring this to the next level over here. So examples of how we fix this is uh, the, the four bullet points of write artist press releases that contributed to an increase in 23 uh, sales by 23%. I know uh, someone in the chat over here is like, what do you mean by quantification? How is that demonstrated? These are really good examples because the percentage shows that your results and your efforts brought a plus to the company as well. Uh, and also just random numbers too, like what was the quantity of data you were working with? The second bullet point is really cool because if you tell me, oh, I built an app online, that's cool. But can you tell me like how many people downloaded set out app? Uh, how many people? Uh, how many uh, efficiencies it's created to help people? How many five-star reviews? How many access? Those are numbers that you could pull out that make the reading experience that more significant, and all those other great things over there too. Uh, and you can see something as small as uh, I know some people in this might have experience working as an RA, a residence assistant, or a don at a different university. You can take something as small as this. A line over here that says, oh, I used to work at university housing, thinking it might not be relevant for a role at a company like Qualcomm. And you could say that you've developed uh, leadership skills with 20 plus students that you've worked with. Uh, you've created educational programming with them that increases their GPA. So these are results-based things. And it shows that you have the skills and autonomy to drive change and effort, something that I would like to see on a resume 
preferably if it is relevant to the type of roles and uh, we hire for, but still it shows that you're multifaceted in the different things that you do. Cool. So the next slide is actually a, a, an activity we have over here. And I love that we have a really rambunctious uh, chat box over here. So I have, I guess, one and a half um, resumes uh, listed on the screen over here. We're going to do some live critiquing, and I made some notes on this. Throw in the comment section everything that you see wrong with these two examples of resumes over here. Everyone's saying pictures, but no one's no one likes the picture of Ham Dugo. I think he looks great. What do you think, Andrew? I think it looks pretty cool myself. Um, <laughs> I think uh, his name that's like a mirror image of itself. I mean, obviously these are the circled things, um, but that's not needed. Um, you know, <laughs> the like customer do go equals sales. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think that is a little bit excessive. Um, but yeah. What else are we seeing in the chat box over here? I know our next slide talks like, about everything that goes wrong with it, but hobbies what is what we're seeing? seeing in the chat. Um, good. The color is disturbing. Eh, fair. Um, let's see. Also, did anyone take in that the customer service bar graph says 90%, but it's at the same distance as the 100% bar graphs? Yep. So the numbers, I, I don't, I don't even yeah. like graphs, but it's wrong, you know? See, there's, there's a question of what are the percentages need, mean? Hobbies not necessarily. Uh, I know your stat is the third skill listed over here, Andrew, keeping it cool at 100%. I mean. <laughs> cool. And some people are making notice of uh, Christina Jacobs too. So very, very general bullet points on uh, on her resume as well. Right. So for Christina, what I would want to see for like a customer service rep is cut down the time to, you know, the time of the call by 20% by resolving, you know, conversations early. Um, uh, let's see, try to create positive rapport with customers, um, had a 96% customer satisfaction rating after the call, um, things like that, right? Things that are measurable and can show impact rather than tried to create positive rapport with customers. Great, but that doesn't really tell a story, right? Um, that's more of the task and not the result. Perfect, you are dropping all this knowledge. So let's move on to the next slide, which kind of lays out all of those different things. So uh, I know you dropped a little bit of tid, uh, tidbits over there, Andrew, but yeah, any, Anything you want to focus on that was really wrong on this, or you could take from like the, the bullet points on the left, or just anything that you saw that you were like, ah, that's not a good representation. Um yeah, I think um what's a good representation is um is you know the name on Christina Jacobs, right? Like Christina Jacobs, fantastic. Um, maybe have all of the contact information just under. Um, you know, her name. So having the contact information up, customer service representative um, on the kind of left hand side next to the experience, right? It seems like that's been her experience so far, both jobs um, from, you know, from 2017 all the way till now. Um, so maybe kind of flip those two. Um, and again, just kind of, you know, more metrics focus. She doesn't have any metrics on her, um, on her resume, kind of telling that story. Um, understanding what she was able to do while there versus what she was tasked with, right? Um, we can all pretty much assume what a customer service representative does, um, as well as I can assume what a hardware engineer does generally, right? But I want to see the results and the things that you were able to do while at an internship or working on a project, right? Um, professional wording, uh, Ham Dugo helped like 50 customers per day. <laughs> Probably not the best. Um, so maybe reframing that, right? Um, and I think we all have access to AI, um, ChatGPT, Copilot, et cetera. 
um, these days, maybe, you know, make sure that, um, you know, you're prompting that and saying, you know, can you help me write this in a more professional manner with, you know, demonstrable metrics or um, maybe, you know, throw in metrics and then have it kind of reframe that sentence, right? Um, I think everybody here is very technical, um, probably more technical than myself, um, by probably, I mean, for sure. Um, so plug that in, play around with it, um, see what that nets you. Perfect. Yeah, I think uh, you described it a, a fair amount of that, I guess, prior to uh, moving on to the Q&A session with this group. Uh, some bullet points we put over there is for Christina Jacobs, we noted that uh, she, she does a little bit too much of just describing, but not uh, the achievements and impacts, lacking quantified viable data, uh, and past tense for current role. Uh, with Ham, there is just a whole bunch going on with that resume, but picture of self, not a good look. Overly complicated formatting, unprofessional self nickname, uh, unprofessional email. Someone caught that over there too. Uh, too many graphics, informally written, ambiguous results, uh, some unnecessary job points, uh, some unnecessary professional listed skills over there. Uh, hey, maybe the 15% in Italian language could come and help, but probably not uh, not at this specific moment right here. And percentages to skill sets. Uh, I know what you're thinking. This is a satirized version of a bad resume, but maybe there might be one or two things over here where you're going to walk away being like, ah, I might have actually done this once, if not earlier, uh, right now. So that being said, Andrew, I think uh, we're in a position where eight minutes away, maybe we move over to the Q and A, uh, the chat box over in the Q and A, um, and yeah. we'll get to maybe we can live answer both me and Andrew. Uh, it looks like they've already started, but I want everyone to transition from the chat box and right under it on the right side to the Q and A, and upvote the ones that you like as a question, uh, and um, if you want to add a new question, go for that as well. Cool. Uh, so Rohit, uh, Rohit Roy. Oh yeah, go for it, Andrew. Sorry, would you be able to share the QR code one last time? I think we've gotten a few chat um, requests. I sure. For the, the for next, which one? next slide, um, just the QR code so that people can scan it. For sure. Let me get. Uh, I'll do them even one better. Let me get the link and I'll throw it in the chat. Love that. I think I sent it to you this morning, Ed. Maybe not you. I threw it in another group chat we had. But while I'm pulling up this, y'all, uh, while I'm pulling up this, uh, up upvote the 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 Q and A's that you see of importance, and add questions too. But if you haven't filled out that QR code, me and Brian Sue, my friend over there, both put it in the chat box over here. So fill that out in tandem. We're gonna pivot over to the Q and A box over here. So Brian to Brian. Uh, Look at that. Um, Perfect. Do you want to take important. that first question? Yeah. Um, so starting kind of from the middle, um, how important are cover letters? I personally don't look at them. Um, I know that that might be a bad thing to say, um, but I'm more, I'm more interested in uh, your resume, your body of work, the impact that you've made, your skill set. Um, I think that in large part they've gone away. Um, and again, like when you say like when you see like you know, import your CV and cover letter. Um, I would say, um, yeah, I would say just your resume um, is the most important thing. Um, yeah. Perfect. Never met a recruiter that looks at cover letters. Probably true. Um, <laughs> Andrew, have you pivoted over to the Q and A? Uh, and it's uh, just below the chat. It's like two yeah. word bubbles. Got it. Sorry, I'm still in the chat. Here we go. Speaker chat. Yeah, or they, uh, they're, they've been upvoting some popular ones. So if you want to uh, go in priority of uh, Rohit, that has 21 upvotes, uh, 24 upvotes, and I could jump in after, and then we could just Hold on, hang I them out like, for the next six minutes. I feel like my parents here. Um, where is it? <laughs> uh, it's a chat box. I'll send you a team screen share. Uh, the first okay. one's coming from Rohit Roy, full-time SDE uh, opportunities. Um, and I put uh, where to find it in your screen cap uh, over there, Andrew. You see the two bubbles? Um, no. Hold on one sec. Let's see. 
I'm so sorry, everybody. No worries. Uh, I can have a look, couple of questions. Oh, here we go. Uh, I'm sorry. So sorry. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. Found it. Um, I told you guys, uh, you guys are all more technical than myself. Um, full-time SDE positions for new grads. We do have those full-time opportunities. Um, just, you know, go, go to our website um, and then filter by full-time opportunities. You should be able to find those there. Um, I was given the advice not to focus too much on projects simply because most projects aren't large enough to seem impactful. How should we stand out on your resume? Um, so any, if you only have projects and you don't have any, res, any internship experience, um, I would say to focus on those, on that project, right? What you were able to drive, um, what you created, what, uh, efficiency that you were able to kind of solve for. Um, some people kind of create like their own chess bot, um, to beat, you know, other chess players or chess games. Right. Um, so whatever you did in relation to whatever you're studying is, you know, important to highlight, uh, you know, and then again, your, your skills, your, your keyword searches, um, we're certainly not expecting, you know, freshman software to have multiple internship experiences yet. Right. Um, so if you don't have any internship experience, um, you know, relevant coursework, keywords, projects, uh, associations um, and clubs that you might be a part of is what I would recommend there. Um, let's see, sorting by upvotes. One gets a student resume getting shortlisted in Qualcomm. Um, I would say if you're not getting a, um, you know, attending events like this, first and foremost, right? Like getting your name associated with different, you know, organizations, different partner, um, partner organizations that we partnership, partner with as a company. Um, also networking, right? Network with uh, those engineers on LinkedIn, you know, dig into the company, dig into certain, um, you know, engineers in, in your area of, of study, right? So if it's hardware, look up hardware engineers at Qualcomm, um, you know, see, you know, if you can find like a senior engineer or something like that to understand a day in the life, um, you know, lead with that on LinkedIn to like a recruiter like myself or another recruiter and saying like, Hey, I had an opportunity to chat with, you know, so-and-so at Qualcomm in the hardware division. Um, I learned about their day-to-day, -day, highly interested, et cetera, or ask that person, you know, after like your coffee chat with them, you know, would you be willing to refer me into, you know, your program or, uh, with your, uh, with your hiring team, or do you know of any, you know, hardware teams that are hiring? So those are little things. Networking takes you a, a lot further these days than just submitting a resume, right? Um, and as Brian said that, you know, the job market is tough right now. Um, and again, uh, there's, you know, thousands of applicants. Um, so any way that you can stand out, um, you know, whether it's partner or networking, et cetera, is, uh, you know, ultimately going to help you. Um, perfect. I do want to time check. We're about a minute away from finishing up. Uh, but mm -hmm. I also wanted to add over here is, uh, if you're at your computer right now, I assume you are, um, write this down, Qualcomm Wireless Academy. Uh, we do offer free certification courses for students to uh, learn about different Qualcomm, whether it's 5G or AI training when it comes to that. Um, yeah, Andrew, maybe we only got one more minute, so uh, feel free to take one question and um, yeah. bring us home. Interview process, um, typically just two uh, interviews for interns. Um, it would just be, you know, kind of a behavioral interview. And then the other one would be a technical interview. So like a hacker rank or something like that. Um, there was another question here that I'm going to try to get to, um, let's see, what does an internship at Qualcomm look like? So we were talking a little bit about it, you know, where you have a manager, um, and a mentor, um, we provide you with, um, those two resources. So your manager is going to give, going to give you the body of work. Your mentor is going to be there to develop you, make sure that you're understanding everything uh, in the right way. Uh, there to, you know, kind of stretch your skill set and make sure that you're uh, challenged. Um, we're going to give you a real business, you know, problem to work on. So you're not going to have just like a fake project uh, to work on. So you're going to your your work will have a, a real business impact. Um, so that's kind of gen generalizing it, right? Like it it depends on which. Um, area that you're in, whether it's hardware, AI, um, ML, software, et cetera. Um, so that's generally what to expect. Again, uh, I know we're short on time, so I'm trying to be, be brief. Um, we do, uh, we do sponsor, we are open to international students. We do have many, actually, I'd say probably the majority of our, uh, uh, uh interns are international students. Um, so yes, and there's, 
not a requirement for uh, interns to have like U.S. citizenship. So uh, we do sponsor, we do um, help with H-1B, um, you know, bees for a full-time opportunity as well. Um, and that's, I think, all the time we have. Thank you, everyone, everyone for being Perfect here. Perfect timing, Anthony. <laughs> awesome sauce. Can you all hear me? Yep. Yep. Beans. Well, thank you all so much. Um, this was very, very informal. I love the interaction that you you two have together, but overall, the interaction that uh, you have with the students. So if everybody can show their appreciation for both uh, Brian and Andrew, the Qualcomm team in the chat, we really appreciate it. Uh, for the students, make sure there's going to be a survey um, that's going to be dropped in the chat and you all can go fill it out. Let us know what you thought about this session. Let us know what you loved, you know, some takeaways that you all have with this particular session. Please remember that Qualcomm, they, they do have a company booth. Um, they will be there uh, periodically. So you can stop in and say hi to their team. Um, again, thank you all so much for coming. And what we're going to do, we're going to head over and show a, a brief video from Bobby D. Thank you all. Thanks, everyone. Thank you for joining us in this session. I got some information before you leave. It says, please take a moment to complete a brief survey to share your feedback. Remember how valuable feedback is. I'm trying to come back three years in a row, and it's all based on feedback, right? <laughs> to see what comes up next, I want you to head back to the main stage and check out the schedule. See you soon in the next set of sessions.